Mmm. Oh, it's so good. So yeah. what's special about this recipe? Uh, I think the first thing is just how easy it is to work with the dough. It's not too sticky, not too liquidy, or not too tough, right? It's just so easy to, to work with it, manipulate. It rises right away. Then the second thing, I love that it has rye flour in it. Mm -hmm. Just a hint, not a lot, right? And it reminds me like very closely kind of a type of bread I grew up with, kind of in Czechoslovakia. So, mm -hmm. so it's kind of a really kind of homey feel. And then, you know, how moist it stays mm -hmm. for, for days. Today on Cooking with Monica. Monica has tried out all sorts of sourdough recipes during COVID and stuff, but we're gonna learn all about her favorite. So my favorite recipe is the one that I found online and I tried it very first time after many failures and it just worked. It was fantastic. It was quite long. Uh, it takes about three days to make it. Uh, it's just most of the time it's like waiting time. So we'll be showing you here how to make it, all the steps. So this is my starter. I just pulled it out from the fridge. So what we need to do is to refresh it. It's been in the fridge for a couple of weeks. I haven't fed it. Uh, so the first thing to do to make this bread is have a couple cycles of uh, starter refresh. So what we do is you really need just a little, very little of the original starter. Um, so I'm going to weigh about four grams of my starter from the fridge. And now if you, if you have starter that is ready to go, that you feed every day, you can skip all these steps about the refreshing starter. And then 20 grams of the water. So I have the water ready. Let's... Did you pre-weigh that water? No, so that's why I have to weigh it. Oh, I see. Oh, mm, it's a little bit more. That's okay. Is it gonna work? It will, it, it, it's a foolproof, right? So it doesn't matter, it's just a couple. You just have to compensate it with the same amount of flour. So you're gonna go up to, to 52 20, You know what, I'll grams, reset right? it. Oh. I'll reset it and just making sure that it's like 26 26 grams of flour of grams of flour and it's foolproof no I won't be of uh, 20 oh shoot ah. a little bit I don't think you know we have to be that precise <laughs> <laughs> so anyway so now I'll mix it now I'll all mix it together into kind of like a paste and I'll just leave it here on a counter the whole day to rest and grow so it's been 10 hours. Uh, it's 8.45 p.m. right now. And look, it totally doubled. So now we are doing the second refresh. And um, for one bread, what you need to do is 10 grams of this refreshed starter and then 80 grams of water. Let's be more precise here. Okay, I think that's okay. You always go over. You always go over. <laughs> I know. And then 80 grams of flour. Oh, so no, no, no. I did 80 for water, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so you, if you overshot, you wanted yeah. the same amount of water right. and flour. Exactly, yeah. Because then it's too liquidy or too dry or something, right? So you just want to compensate for whatever. And now you mix it, same way as kind of the first round, and just let it stand for another kind of 10 to 12 hours. And we expect that it will double size tomorrow. So this will be just enough big cup to, to accommodate that. Wow, check that out. Look how much it grew. We are on day two. It's 8 a.m. in the morning, so it's been about 12 hours since we did the second cycle of refreshness, and now we are ready to make the dough. So here is the recipe. We will take the starter and we need 130 grams. Now this is important to be really precise. So let's make sure mm -hmm. that we are precise but kind of hard. 30 grams. 29. So now we need to add uh, 350 grams of flour. So again, I'm using all purpose King's Arthur flour. It's the same flour we used for the starter. So let's measure 350 grams. 
Arthur. Arthur, king of the Britons. Now knock it off. Yes, Lord. Right. <laughs> Damn. Just right. Okay, 250. Now, 70 grams of rye flour. 70. 70. Okay. And then 290 grams of water. 90. Perfect. So now what we want to do, there is one more ingredient actually that goes in and it's a salt. But we want to hold on to it yet. We are not, we don't want to put it in yet. We will be putting the salt, 12 grams of salt, when we'll be mixing the dough. Sorry, kneading the dough. <laughs> so now um, we have starter water and flour and we will mix it together. Kind of just making sure that water gets mixed with the flour uh, and starter and just kind of very roughly just kind of create this mixture. Okay, this is perfect. And we will let it stand for about 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, this will allow uh, for water to be absorbed uh, by flour and it will make it easier than to knead the dough uh, after that. So let it rest um, and we'll continue in 30 minutes. Okay, 30 minutes passed. The dough looks like this and we are ready to start kneading. I'm using KitchenAid with a hook. Uh, we'll be kneading it for 12 minutes. And the first six minutes, we'll be kneading it on slow, kind of on a stir. Um, let me time this. And this is the time when we also start adding the 12 grams of salt. I already have it pre-weighed, so I'm just gradually adding salt as the dough uh, is being kneaded. So meanwhile, we can prepare the bowl where we let the dough rise. I'm using a bowl with a lid and you want to rub it a little bit with vegetable oil. I use sunflower oil. I take kind of a corner of the paper towel, put a little bit of oil on it and kind of just rub it very lightly. You don't want to make it too oily, but that will kind of prevent uh, dough sticking uh, to the bowl. So if you don't have the bowl with a lid, you can just use a regular bowl and again, rub it a little bit with the oil and I use the cellophane wrap to cover it just to make sure that the moisture is not evaporating and just to, and over that, I usually put a dish towel just to hold it down. Okay, we are six minutes down, so let's speed up uh, our kneading here to uh, speed two. So the dough is perfectly done. 12 minutes passed. It doesn't stick to the bowl. So we are all done by kneading it. And now we need to transition it to our bowl. Now this is a little bit kind of like this. Spatula. And just move the dough in the bowl. Oh man, that's an exercise. <laughs> all right, it's all in. Okay, and now we will cover it. Air out of it. And let it rise for 40 minutes. So what are the next steps? So the next step is actually the most important step, very important, and we are going to fold the dough. What does that mean? Okay. Now, how do you fold the dough? Do you feel like David from uh, Schitt's Creek that was asking oh. how to fold the cheese? <laughs> how do you fold it? The but how, how do you fold it? Do you fold it in half like a piece of paper and drop it in the pot or what do you do? It says fold it in. This is your recipe. 
You fold in the cheese then. <laughs> so we are folding dough, not cheese, but you wanna wet your hands because the dough is pretty sticky. So I have wetted hands and uh, you can see that the dough a little bit rose, rose, risen. It has risen. It, it has risen. Rise. <laughs> it rose. So, um, so let me tell you first why we need to do the folding. So folding helps to give dough the strength and also equates the temperature between kind of layers of the dough. So uh, there are many um, videos, how to do it. You know, I watched a bunch of them because I was just like David in Schitt's Creek. I don't know how to fold the uh, dough. So this is the technique that works for me. So you basically grab a, the dough with your wet hands, stretch it and fold it over. Turn it, grab again, stretch it and fold it over. Gra turn it, grab again, stretch it and fold it over. Turn it, grab, stretch. And you can start feeling that as the dough and you kind of continue doing it. And you can start feeling that as the dough at the beginning was kind of goopy, suddenly it's being a little bit tougher, right? So that's, you can see how you're kind of adding that strength to the dough and, you know, from kind of the goopy uh, thing, you know, you kind of create this kind of strong ball almost. Tuck it in, cover it and let it rise for another 40 minutes. Okay, second folding. The dough rised. See you in 40 minutes. So we are ready for the third folding. Dough rose again. And wet hands. So we completed our third fold and now we let the dough rise for additional three to four hours. Basically the whole rising time should be about five hours total, including the time we spend on the folding of the dough. Okay, so five hours is over. It's about 3.30, a little bit more than five hours, but that's okay. But look how much dough we have. Wow, wow. It has risen really nice. So now what we are going to do is to uh, form a loaf and we'll putting it into a proofing basket and then putting in a fridge to uh, rest till next day. So this is how we are going to do it. First, we prepare our bonneton. And I like to put a little bit of the rice flour to prevent the dough from sticking. So I kind of just use this just to dust it. So see how it kind of sticks. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you have a good amount of flour on, on your board, kind of like disperse it. And now we will just put the dough out on the floured surface of the uh, board. There you go. We kind of disperse it and like a rectangular if you can. Making sure you have enough flour on the bottom so the bottom doesn't stick, but the top should totally stick. So you fold it this way. Then you fold this over here and then you will roll it into kind of the, like a round loaf, like this, in kind of a bowl. Okay, and kind of try to shape it, push kind of the dough down with your hands. Right, you're kind of stretching it down with your hands on the right. edges, right? Kind of yeah. rolling it inwards. Right, yeah, kind of making sure that all that is there. Okay, you create kind of a nice, nice bowl. What do you call it? Bowl? 
Ball? Yeah, sure. Yeah. There's probably a technical word for it, but I don't know. Right. Now what you do is take this, get it underneath, and just put it upside down here into the proofing basket. This is okay. okay. And the last step is that you dump your dish towel with cold water, just quickly dump it. And cover the basket so there is a moisture right it doesn't dry out in in a fridge kind of cover it and put it in the fridge for up to 24 hours okay so today is day three the b day baking day so let's start the oven this is the first thing we uh, preheat the oven to 482 fahrenheit we will need cast iron dutch oven to bake the bread so actually when you're preheating the oven you want to put that cast iron inside so it preheats together with the oven so while the oven is preheating let's start working on the bread because as soon as the oven hits 482 with cast iron dutch oven in it you want to start baking bread right away because you don't want to let that cast iron soak so much heat that it's too hot uh, for the bread to bake so let's get on it so we had our bread in the fridge overnight uh, in our proofing basket so, voila you can see that it kind of rose still uh, we can compare the picture yeah, from yesterday and today but definitely you know that that rising process in a fridge is still going on it's just much slower um, so we'll be baking bread on parchment paper so what i do is i get a piece of parchment paper ready and just flip it over and voila this is our loaf of bread um we want to shape it a little bit like i just kind of use the scraper the scraper to kind of just make a kind of nice perfect round loaf great and then you can see that the parchment paper is a little bit too big and as you are putting it into oval or the circle uh, cast iron dutch oven right like the the paper will kind of start folding and interfering with the bread so what i do is i kind of shorten it a little bit around the bread just so it's not just too much excess paper in a way what don't you spin the corner so are you going to i'm going to here here and then what you want to do is cut the corners so as you are putting it in it starts kind of folding nicely oh and also in the middle yeah as we've put it into oven you can kind of see how it kind of then nicely folds and then the last thing you want to do is score the bread. Uh, that way the bread has kind of a cut to you know, help ear, right? it, yeah, to, to create the ear and also kind of help it to still grow, right? Otherwise, you may see that the crust starts breaking, right? If it doesn't have kind of that freedom to move. So you're kind of creating a weak point for it to be able to grow somewhat during the early part of the baking process. Right, right. So to create the ear, you just do kind of one long swoosh around. Okay. 
there. You can kind of see from either side what it looks like. It's starting to open up. That's no problem, right? Right. No. No. And then here is a space where you can come up with whatever uh, pattern you want to do. So I typically just do like a very simple kind of, you know, like leaves, just these sloshes. And it kind of, you know, creates kind of that, the kind of nice, interesting, rustic bread crust. Okay, so oven is 480 to Fahrenheit, which is actually 250 Celsius. So we can pull the cast iron out. Uh, let's just leave the lid in and just pull cast iron out, close it back so we don't lose that 482 <coughs> Celsius uh, Fahrenheit temperature. Uh, I put at the bottom, I put cornmeal just to prevent the bread from uh, burning uh, on the bottom, just a little bit of cornmeal and then transition the bread together with the parchment paper to the cast iron. It's super hot, so use your gloves. It's in, see how it all nicely kind of collapsed the, the our cutouts. And let's cover it with the, and put it in, a, in the oven. Close and let it bake for uh, 15 minutes. Two, one. Okay, so now we reduce the temperature to 446, which equals 230 Celsius. Open the oven, we want to a little bit kind of cool off the oven and remove the cover. And we can see that the bread rolls in nice open, kind of that cut uh, yes. ear. And let's put it back in. And let it now bake for 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes is over. Uh, and you can pull out the bread. Wow. <laughs> it's a funky shape. Oh, it's great. <laughs> but I'm sure it will, it will taste amazing. You wanna use your um, glass because Dutch oven is very hot. And voila, this is the bread. Um, Got a little bit of an ear on the yeah, back side there. Yeah, but not all the you way kind of want to a little bit when you are slicing it or scoring it to make sure that you kind of cut through nicely. Oh, it didn't quite cut through, you think? Yeah, a little, a little that's deeper. what I'm thinking, yeah. So we have another loaf of bread ready. I usually bake two loaves at the same time. I have two proofing baskets, so it's kind of easy. I'm uh, reheating the oven back to 482 Fahrenheit. I leave the cast iron out because it is pretty hot. It soaked all the all the heat from the prior baking. So, um, you know, as I'm saying here, right, we didn't kind of score it properly here. So, you know, let's do it again. You know, scoring it, slicing through, kind of in an angle shaped, right? You don't want to go this, you want to kind of more angle. And, you know, it is better to go like twice to kind of make sure that you kind of cut out that that ear better, right? Kind of here on that, on the upper, upper level. And here you can see the dough is all bit kind of. Okay, uh, let's do some shape. Or pattern. Okay. 78, almost there. We'll prepare. We are ready. Putting the bread back, covering. And I'm putting it again for 15 minutes. Three, two, one, and the bread is done. You can turn off the oven and let's pull the out the second beauty. Look at that! Ooh la la! Look at that ear. Pull it out on a pulling rack. Wow, that looks 
is fantastic. Yeah, look at that ear. For some reason, the second bread always comes nicer. <laughs> but they both taste the same, so... Both look good to me. <laughs> Mmm, oh, it's so good. I hope yours came out good too. Thank you for watching. Can we do it again? Another take? My mouth is still full from the first bite, but. Oh, God. It's so good. I hope yours came out great too. Thanks for watching. Oh, God. That came out really, really good. Mmm. <laughs> It came out so good, I can't fit it onto my face. <laughs> it came out so freaking good. It's like the fifth take that we've done this and my mouth is full of bread and it's so good. I hope yours came out good too. Good luck with baking. Thanks for watching.